up at Sage and I'm procrastinating again. This time, um, we're hungry and craving in and out. So for this simple Sunday, we are going to make some in and out animal style fries. So it's also sue me not Sunday uh, with just the things that we have in the house. So we're going to start with some frozen diced potatoes, courtesy of my roommate Jade. Thanks, Jade. Love you. Um, they are Arita. Uh, just plain and simple diced. So, uh, oh, and we also have the waffle maker. If you've been sort of in my general vicinity in the last six months or so, you know that I've been putting everything in the waffle maker. So that's what we're going to do. Waffle maker, animal fries. I literally have never loved a kitchen inven invention more than I love my waffle maker. Um, bought it at Target for $15. It was on sale and literally has changed my entire life. You probably thought this channel was going to be all sappy love songs. <laughs> Joke's on you. Nope. Um, we made some house-made uh, Thousand Island Special Island in and out sauce. Um, we used ketchup and mayonnaise and mustard and relish, which we just like found the recipe on the internet. Um, we also added a little bit of sriracha mayo because we like a little spice in our lives. The thing about making things that aren't waffles in the waffle maker is that the ready button is very deceiving. Like right now it says that the waffle is ready, but that's not quite right. Um, so it's important that you just really think about, you know, try to really just like form a relationship with your waffle maker so that you're like really on the same level so that you don't have to listen to the green light or the red light or whichever light. Um, and you just are able to sort of you're building this thing together, you know, so it takes some reciprocity of, you know, feelings. You could talk to your waffle maker. Don't get too close. It's really hot. Um, one time I accidentally like grabbed the whole thing and that was a bummer. Everybody has a different relationship to cheese. Um, my relationship to cheese is not less is more. Um, in fact, it's quite the opposite of that. It's more like the more cheese you have, the happier you are in your life. But ultimately, I just love cheese, so I'm going to put a bunch of cheese. This is where the relationship with your waffle maker really comes in handy. Um, and you have to sense when the cheese has, like, fried enough that it's not going to stick to the waffle maker anymore. Um, but it's going to, like, do the thing that you want. You can hear it bubbling. It's quite nice. The cool thing about the waffle maker also is like it's really unpredictable. So if you're into like a little bit of chaos, the waffle maker is the cooking implement for you. Because <laughs> you just really actually never know. Even things I've made like 14 times on the 15th time, ooh, doesn't work out. It's very steamy. But like, I don't know if like cheese steam is the best kind of steam for your pores, but I feel like cheese is already coming out of my pores, so... And this is where sort of the unpredictability comes in. You never really know what's going to happen. But this cheese is like beautifully fried on top, which is like my jam. So, okay. Cheesy potato fries with some sort of sense of waffleness to them. I mean, cheese, good. Potatoes, good. Onions, good. Thousand Island, good. Maybe not the most beautiful thing you've ever eaten, but I bet you it's going to be freaking delicious. Homemade, in and out, cheesy waffle fries. In and out, don't sue me when everyone starts making these fries instead of coming to eat yours. It tastes like animal fries. It does. It tastes like animal fries. So... Ultimately, I'm going to call this a win, a waffle win, if you will. I think this is just going to refuel me right back into working on my thesis, mom and dad. Don't worry. I'm going to get it done. Um, so this is delicious, and I hope you get yourself some in and out fake waffle fries soon enough because I'm going to eat all of these.